I am the residential unit coordinator at uh, Prairie Ridge Integrated Behavioral Healthcare, and I, I really am passionate about what we do there. I've taken up exercise, I guess, more avid exercise. You know, I like to, I like to move my body. I think it's important. It's important not only for physical health, but it's important for emotional health and mental health too. Um, you know, I like to read. I like to sit in the quiet, but I don't like to sit very long because my mind races all the time. Um, it's just, I am full of all these ideas and figure, okay, well, that's good. Well, that's good. Let's figure out this. So, um, there's just a lot up here. <laughs> When I was in high school, it was the first time I tried it. Um, it was it was speed. I think it was like like just the speed pills is what what somebody gave me. And I was I was a softball player, and I was a pitcher, and I loved that sport. And they said, Carrie, you need to try this. It'll make your endurance a little bit better. You know, you'd be pitching a little bit faster. And I said, Oh, okay. Well, let's just do it. And it did. You know, I felt like it did anyway. And so then it wasn't an issue at all. You know, I met my husband. Um, Oh, I had my, my oldest son on my 22nd birthday. I think I met him when I was about 20, I probably. And we moved up to North Iowa. A group of six of us, you know, went out periodically. And then there was one time another couple came and he introduced uh, meth. And I thought, okay, well, let's just do it. You know, it's just a weekend. It's just one weekend a month. I can, you know, just try it. We'll go out and have fun, whatever. And it wasn't an issue. You know, it wasn't an issue at all. And then I was over at another couple's house and this person came over and I smoked it for the first time. I'm like, oh my gosh, life is so good right now. And I thought that I, I even had the thinking that, my gosh, this is making me more social. I can talk clearly. I can think more clearly. I am getting stuff done around my house and I have more energy for my kids. And, you know, that's where it really became an issue. I always wanted to be a mom, always wanted to be a mom. And I know that when I looked forward, I, I tried to make plans for it. Um, I, I tried to make plans for uh, what that was going to look like in, in my life. And, um, when I got involved in substance use, it threw that for a turn. As you start using more, it's there and it's gone. And you start thinking, okay, well, you know, you just kind of like look for it a little bit. Even you may not feel like there's a loss to it, you know, you're kind of looking for it a little bit. And then all of a sudden it becomes your main focus. And when it's not there, you are searching desperately for something like that. It's really comfortable at first being, being social. And I think that most use, no matter what substance it is, I think it is very comforting in that community aspect of it. And then all of a sudden, that that being comfortable with that leads to extreme discomfort. And you want to get out of that so bad that you're seeking for comfort in being isolated. And I was presented a tipping point from that man right there that I wasn't very happy about at first. He said, you can choose the drugs and the lifestyle, or you can be here with me and the kids. So you can't have both. I need a dope to even feel anything other than what this, whatever it was, this muck that I was in, right? And I was like that for almost two years. Again, this man right here, he says, you know, Carrie, you need to get to the doctor. You know, you need to do something because this is miserable. The, the house is dark. You don't go outside with the kids anymore. You barely go to any of their activities. You need to get some help. And I went to the doctor and I got on um, an antidepressant. It wasn't until I started getting the my brain regulated, the chemicals in my brain regulated, where I started to go outside again. We started going to church again and a, and a group of women, and I don't even think that they even realized what they were doing at this time, but they enveloped me, you know, they, they just surrounding me, um, willingly, I guess, without me even asking them. And I unwillingly was a part of it, you know, and it was then that they started teaching me a new way of living. I finally started being accountable for, um, me, my choices, my thoughts, my words, um, I learned what forgiveness was. Um, again, I didn't know that this was even going to be a this, you know, I, I had no idea, uh, because I was just so stuck in the muck, uh, that I couldn't see what was, what was beside me, what was in front of me. 
I, I couldn't even really see what was behind me. And it was, it was difficult. You know, I now can see this really clearly. You know, I can see where my future may be in the future. And, um, I also can see where my past was really clearly and how number one, I don't want to be there again. Um, but number two, how, Maybe my story, you know, I, I believe everybody's story, there's a purpose to their past in every situation, no matter, no matter what their journey is. I think there's a purpose in, in your past. Um, and that's where I hope that my, that my journey leads. I think gratitude is huge. Gratitude is huge. I think being present is huge and also making sure that I'm showing myself grace and giving myself permission to be okay. You know, I think it's really important that, that people who are struggling with, with addiction and searching for this life of recovery, it's, it's really important to give yourself permission that you're, it, it, it's, it's all right to feel this way right now. You know, it is okay and you are okay in this moment. <laughs>